<laughs> if it, if it's, it's, clear. if it's tight, yeah, it's fine. That's why a guitar and a mandolin work well together. One's a different sound, a tighter sound, a quicker I response. I get a mandolin. Well, no, I'm sure, like David said, you know, one guy, when it's two guitars, one guy might capo up and actually play a little brighter, choppier part, uh, as opposed to the boom, strummier part, so. Um, um, and I guess we should talk about just thinking about rhythm. We've been doing that in the bass class. Um, I guess it's just, part of it's physical, Part of it you do without thinking at all. You don't want to think, because if you think, it'll ruin it. You try to keep your brain <laughs> out of the whole equation, because it'll slow you up. But well, on the other weird. hand, I mean, there's a certain presence of mind or an awareness that never leaves, sort of an intensity that has to be cranked up at the same time. So I was telling my class, the question was, well, how do you play fast? You know, if the banjo player kicks off a tune, how do you play fast? So I started, I tried it, tried to see what it was I was doing, and I realized the whole time I was doing it, I told him, I said, well, mostly you're sitting here thinking about, God dang, banjo player. He's <laughs> <laughs> like, I'll show you, by God, I'll just keep it right here. <laughs> and you're mumbling That's under right. your breath the whole time. There's all you Hey, sometimes getting a little mad is the best way to, to, uh, way. to get what you want. <laughs> Even at, even at yourself, it's like a discipline or yeah. And um, also I think a real important thing is uh, to be able to keep rhythm yourself. Even while I'm carrying on this conversation or I can talk real slow and I'm still going to keep the same rhythm going. And like an internal clock. If you can't do that without any distract, you know, even with distractions or whatever, um, a lot of people want to play as a response to something, like a mandolin chop. They think has to be a response, or the downbeat has to be a response off of the mandolin chop. But I think um, that was just pure, dumb, physical hand kept going, you know. And um, that kind of you see a guy like Sam Bush chopping. It's just like it's a mechanical thing. It's a, it's a machine that's in action. He kicks it in gear, and the machine goes. And uh, you can you can lean over to Sam and just start talking about anything that happened during the day. It all just keeps on going. So that really is being done without thinking and without responding to anything. It's a mechanical, uh, you know, piece of machinery kind of thing. So I think that's a big part of it. <laughs> I know nothing. <laughs> <laughs> There's different kind of strums, and each are appropriate. And you know, in its right proper place. Some strums are like this. Which isn't really accenting the, the notes Todd is. It's just a full strum. And then you got the ones where I do what he's doing. right well it depends on the song it depends on the taste or what you're wanting to achieve from what from your playing sometimes I'll be doing this and the bass will do something different Guidelines. They're not etched in stone. Make your own rules. That's my favorite part of playing. It's cheap, it don't cost anything. <laughs> Once you got a guitar, you just explore. But I think defining what your intention is like really important. Like David is doing that big, broad, kind of a sloppy strum in a, in a way. Right. Da -da 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 -da. The little, the little lift up, like really defined. Even though kind of the downs were big and broad, there's a, there was a little hop in there. Just really put it somewhere every time. And um, you know.
know, some people, like David goes, oh man, I rushed or I dragged or whatever. If something is well defined, it can actually be good music in my book. But if it's, if the space between those little that's, 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 were like just a little bit askew, um, then I would have to start thinking, then I would have to start, it, it just, everything starts, starts to weigh. Less automatic. Yeah, rhythm should be light. Even if it's rip, if, almost the faster it gets, the lighter it should feel. Um, it's like there's a left strokes or afterthought. What I hate is hearing this where people go. And they put too much effort into one. that <laughs> up thing. Yeah. It's real rigid. It's and just like a little cue as to where that hand's going to come back down. Is all it is. I think of it as a slinging motion. There's difference. There's a huge world of difference, I think, between rhythm and time. Now, that sounds weird, don't it? You want your rhythm to be in time. You know, that's the whole purpose, so we can all play together. But <coughs> time is insistent, I would like a metronome. Rhythm can float a little bit, and does and will, even if you don't want it to. You know, some people's time, mine, floats a lot. Some people's time floats very little. And so the goal is to play as best as you can, but not to be too obsessed with it because you won't progress if you worry about one thing too much. You have to be aware of it. But if it isn't just absolutely perfect, so what? You get paid the same. <laughs> <laughs> well, most of the time, you know, if, you're, if you're striving for perfection, it's going to be off anyway. So I would still vote for for shoot for as yeah. close as you can get to it. Yeah, and still well, be off. It's the feel. Be what you can be. Join the army. <laughs> Looking for a few good pictures. <laughs> there are no straight lines in nature, you know, and it's the same with it's the same with metronomic is. Uh, it's kind of an illusion in a way. It's abnormal. I've heard people say your heartbeat is fairly constant. No. no. Depends on whether you've been jogging. Depends if I'm sleeping or not. Yeah, exactly. Um, so, you know, rhythm, we all have rhythm to varying degrees, obviously. <laughs> but we all have it. What and do they say? Time is shorter the, the farther from the center of the mass of the Earth. That's. That's physics, so we're so at 5,000 feet. So short people really got it made. So, oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what is it they say? An atomic clock at the bottom of a 100 foot tall windmill will run faster than an atomic clock 100 feet off the surface of the Earth. Really? That's, that's a physics thing. I did, you can tell I just read a brief history of time. Einstein. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, yeah. It has nothing Steve to Moscow. do with what we're saying, but really, if you think about it, okay, at 5,000 feet, 440, Seriously, maybe not noticeable, will not be the same as 440 at sea. Or, what am I saying? 440? No, you're talking about Like, I say 110 beats per minute or something. It's not going to be the same in Denver as it is on the beach. But since we're all here, it is anyway. I just Relative. wanted to say that, you know, because yeah. I just read the book. If you phoned that. somebody that was at sea level, it would yeah. sound weird to them. And you tried to have a conference jam session, <laughs> <laughs> you'd be off with each other the whole but, time. But, you know, the rhythm, the rhythm is, is really, um, I just said this in bass class earlier. That's like the very first most important element in all, any music, I think. Because that's what you feel. All the smarty pants licks in the world won't help <laughs> something that doesn't feel good. And, you know, we were all beating on logs before we figured out how to tune them and play licks. And, uh, you know, that's really the most... You know, if you listen to a million, you know, uh, 20 string quartets, the one you're going to like, pitch is one thing, but the, the feel of that of, of the the flow and the feel and, and that stuff's not metronomic that's just right. feel so um, uh, it's really important you know what I've noticed is all the great players all the great players your Jerry Douglas is your your uh, Sam Bushes let's take those two guys just for example because we all know them timing is wonderful feels wonderful they're taking a solo they make a mistake. That's normal. It's human. That's all right. It's even wonderful. 
them, their mistakes are cool. Right. Because timing it's won't let up. Time. It's in time. <laughs> Whereas if you're playing and you make a mistake and you're out of time, well then everything goes straight to hell and doesn't sound very good. On its way. It's in the hand basket. So, you know. Oh, rhythm. All that's important. First we're just yakking. And there's, okay, then in bluegrass, here's, this just kind of changed gears a little bit. There are lots of different feels. And some of them are really, really subtle. Like a medium or a medium slow tune can be like a death march, or it can have a little bit of a, a bounce to it. I'm not going to change tempo, but it's, I just kind of changed the approach. Maybe it's all in my mind, but I need to rest the band. Or, or play that like a draggy, sad kind of thing. Same tempo. Totally different. Oh, it is. Add just that little bit of bounce. A lot of that comes from the banjo, how the banjo player wants to interpret it. Um, yeah, how much we did that? <laughs> like the banjo player. Um, Steve Martin said everything's happy when you're playing the banjo. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Steve, your house is on fire. Pendulum swings. The two outside points might be the same, but the stuff that goes on, it's yeah, the weight that that pendulum like that. has. Whether it's whether it's this much of a big arc or or all of a little arc or something, you know, I don't know how to. It's really hard to put into words. But um, is there are there any questions? Like what kind of things you're encountering, or, or questions, or why you're here? Because we're just blah 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 right now. Give us like to see why you're here. Put on yeah. the spot. Yeah. <laughs> If you want, he just got off the bus on the way to Estes Park. Oh, yeah. We thought this was a book club meeting. <laughs> yeah, I got a question. If, you're, if you got a, a guitar and a bass, it's just the two of you, and, and the guitar player is singing. Who? What's the best way to start the timing? Do you let the bass player start the time, or the guitar player start it because the guitar player would be doing the singing? Well, if it's his song, if it's his singing and strumming, and you're supporting him. They'll count it off or kick it off for you. Yeah. Um, if it's something where, you know, he's he'd feel happier with a bass player counting it because essentially I'm the rhythm section for him. You know, in another way, that could happen too. It, it really doesn't matter. Um, but usually that would be the performer. I'm going to sing and strum. So whatever he wants to do, I'm just going to. You kind of follow them. Go with that. Singers got it made. That's why they're all prima donnas. <laughs> Alright, we're going to do this song I wrote. Here I'm kicking it off. I'm taking the first solo. I'm singing the first verse and chorus. And don't mess it up. Ready? Here goes. Yeah, everybody watch me. Go ahead and say what you mean, David. Don't hold that. <laughs> you know how many lead singers it takes to screw in the light bulb, right? How many? One, they hold the light bulb and the universe revolves around and That's it. <laughs> how do we get on to that? Just oh, mutual hatred. Just <laughs> <laughs> mutual hatred. <laughs> no, whoever gets, whoever's singing the song pretty much gets to pick it. Mm -hmm. Is that what you're talking about? Yeah. And the guitar yeah. player's doing the lead? Mm -hmm. I've always kind of done it like so. If Yeah, if I'm going to uh, sing a song and these guys are going to follow me, I like I like it when they do this or I do this. I'll kind of lean over and say, let's do nine pound. I'll kind of do Let's this. Do a song. Kind of one, two. Oh, really? I need to do it. Maybe, you know. I need to do it. Oh, you're singing. You can't sing. Oh. <laughs> That's typical. They don't know what they want. Um, <laughs> <so>. <laughs> Songwriter, singer. Can I take your first lead? Uh, I could. Okay, I'll do that and then I'll count it. One, two, three. So I'm trying to let them know what tempo I want to do it at.
gets dropped the other way, counted, or counted off or if it's out of the top. And the second uh, gets <laughs> made before it hits the It's really dark or that end like the same. Hey, Steve. Oh, good. Yeah, how much of that comes to you? Draggy. Well, my mind is tempo. Well, slow tint. Some of the gears a little too loose. Oh, okay. <laughs> no straight. Because if your timing is wonder state, they all know that. That's really important. Uh, one, you're going to lose a million. So that's really the logs. But to help something that does fix in the work. The very <laughs> one is <laughs> 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 see, uh, red. Like I said, no. I just read out 13 mil. What is that? Well, that's the difference. <laughs> red depends upon what people say. Away. Same with. Well, well, uh, I would still driving for. <laughs> but if it is about one, not to be in so people's time. time. Even time is. This time. Thank you. Uh, yeah. That's the fast. Less to start. That button is wet. Fine. Sloppy tension is. Place appropriate. Responding going. Kind of about it. And the machine. Sam Bush going. This mandolin has to be a response. Even with that, like an intro talk, to be able to keep. Even at this. Hey, sometimes getting a little mad is the best way to, to it's uh, a good one. It's like oh god, try it, it kicks off a few times. Never leave. On the so other try to keep it at all. Uh rhythm. Uh, boom, strong, brighter. You know, one guy here sound if it's like 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 it's Keeping back your head, time was fine. It'll help. Thanks a lot, Pat. Yeah, thanks. Thank you. If it's tight, yeah, it's fine. That's why a, a guitar and a mandolin work well together. One's a different sound, a tighter sound, a quicker response. I should response. get a mandolin. Well, no, I'm sure, like David said, you know, one guy, when it's two guitars, one guy might capo up and actually play a little brighter, choppier part, uh, as opposed to the boom, strummier part, so. Um, um, and I guess we should talk about just thinking about rhythm. We've been doing that in the bass class. Um, I guess it's just, part of it's physical, Part of it you do without thinking at all. You don't want to think because if you think, it'll ruin it. You try to keep your brain <laughs> out of the whole equation because it'll slow you up. But well, on the other weird. hand, I mean, there's a certain presence of mind or an awareness that never leaves. Sort of an intensity that has to be cranked up at the same time. So I was telling my class the question was, well, how do you play fast? You know, if the banjo player kicks off a tune. How do you play fast? So I started, I tried it, tried to see what it was I was doing, and I realized the whole time I was doing it, I told him, I said, well, mostly you're sitting here thinking about, God dang, banjo player. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I'll show you, but I got off this keeper right here. <laughs> and you're mumbling That's under right. your breath the whole time. There's all you Hey, sometimes getting a little mad is the best way to, to, uh, way. to get what you want. <laughs> Even at, even at yourself, it's like a discipline or yeah. And um, also I think a real important thing is uh, to be able to keep rhythm yourself. Even while I'm carrying on this conversation or I can talk real slow and I'm still going to keep the same rhythm going. And like an internal clock. If you can't do that without any distract, you know, even with distractions or whatever, um, a lot of people want to play as a response to something, like a mandolin chop. They think has to be a response, or the downbeat has to be a response off of the mandolin chop. But I think um, that was just pure, dumb, physical hand kept going, you know. And um, that kind of you see a guy like Sam Bush chopping. It's just like it's a mechanical thing. It's a, it's a machine that's in action. He kicks it in gear, and the machine goes. And uh, you can you can lean over to Sam and just start talking about anything that happened during the day. It all just keeps on going. So that really is being done without thinking, 
and without responding to anything, it's a mechanical, uh, you know, piece of machinery kind of thing. So I think that's a big part of it. <laughs> I know nothing. <laughs> <laughs> There's different kind of strums, and each are appropriate and, you know, in its right, proper place. Some strums are like this. to achieve from what from your playing. Sometimes I'll be doing this and the bass will do something different. That's my favorite part of playing. It's cheap, don't cost anything. <laughs> Once you've got a guitar, you just explore. But I think defining what your intention is like really important. Like David was doing that big, broad, kind of a sloppy strum in a, in a way. Right. Da -da 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 -da. The little, the little lift up, like really defined. Even though kind of the downs were big and broad, there's a, there was a little hop in there. Put it somewhere every time. And, um, you know, some people, like David goes, oh man, I rushed or I dragged or whatever. If something is well defined, it can actually be good music in my book. But if it's, if the space between those little that's, 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 were like just a little bit askew, um, then I would have to start thinking, then I would have to start. It just everything it's starts starts to weigh less automatic. Yeah, rhythm should be light. Even if it's rip, if almost the faster it gets, the lighter it should feel. Um, it's like there's a left stroke or afterthought. What I hate is hearing this where people go and they put too much effort into one. that <laughs> up thing. Yeah. And it's real rigid. It's just like a little cue as to where that hand's going to come back down. I think of it as a slinging motion. There's difference. There's a huge world of difference, I think, between rhythm and time. Now, that sounds weird, don't it? You want your rhythm to be in time. You know, that's the whole purpose, so we can all play together. But time is insistent, I would like a metronome. Rhythm flowed a little bit and does and will, even if you don't want it to. You know, some people's time, mine, floats a lot. Some people's time floats very little. And so the goal is to play as best as you can, but not to be too obsessed with it, because you won't progress if you worry about one thing too much. You have to be aware of it, but if it didn't just absolutely perfect so what you get paid the same <laughs> <laughs> well, most of the time though, if, you're, if you're striving for perfection it's going to be off anyway so i would still vote for for shoot for as yeah. close as you can get to it yeah it's still well, be off. it's the feel be what you can be join the army <laughs> looking for a few good pictures <laughs> There are no straight lines in nature, you know, and it's the same with it's the same with metronomic is uh, it's kind of an illusion in a way. Uh, I've heard people say your heartbeat is fairly constant. No, uh, no. Depends on whether you've been jogging. It depends if I'm sleeping. Now. Yeah, exactly. Um, <laughs> so you know, rhythm. We all have rhythm. 
varying degrees, obviously. <laughs> but we all have it. Well, and say time is shorter the, the farther from the center of the mass of the Earth. That's that's physics. So we're so at 5,000 feet. So short people really got it made. So, oh, yeah. <laughs> 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 what is it they say? An atomic clock at the bottom of a 100-foot tall windmill will run faster than an atomic clock 100 feet off the surface of the Earth. Really? That's that's a physics thing. I did. You can tell I just read a brief history of time. Einstein. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, it has nothing Impossible. to do with what we're saying. But really, if you think about it, okay, at 5,000 feet, 440, seriously, maybe not noticeable, will not be the same as 440 at sea. Or what am I saying? 440. No, you're talking. That's like I say, 110 beats per minute or something. It's not going to be the same. Denver as it is on the beach. But since we're all here, it is anyway. I just Relative. wanted to say that, though, because yeah. I just read the book. If you that. phoned somebody that was at sea level, it would yeah. sound weird to them. And you tried to have a conference jam session. <laughs> <laughs> You'd be off with each other the whole but, time. But, you know, the rhythm, the rhythm is, is really, um, I just said this in the bass class earlier, that's like the very first most important element in all, any music, I think, because that's what you feel. All the smarty pants licks in the world won't help something that doesn't feel good and you know we were all beaten on logs before we figured out how to tune them and play licks and uh, you know that's really the most you know if you listen to a million you know 20 string quartets the one you're gonna like pitch is one thing but the, the feel of that of, of the the flow and the feel and and that stuff's not metronomic that's just right feel so um, uh, it's really important you know, what I've noticed is all the great players, all the great players, your Jerry Douglas's, your, your uh, Sam Bush's, let's take those two guys just for example, because we all know them. Timing is wonderful. Feels wonderful. They're taking a solo, they make a mistake. That's normal, it's human, that's all right. It's even wonderful. The, their mistakes are cool. Right. Because the timing it's won't let up. Time. It's in time. <laughs> Whereas if you're playing and you make a mistake and you're out of time, well then everything goes straight to hell. And doesn't sound very good. On its way. <laughs> it's in the hand basket. So you know Oh rhythm is all that's important. Of course we're just yakking. And there's okay, then in bluegrass, here this just kinda of changed gears a little bit. There are lots of different feels, and some of them are really, really subtle. Like a medium or a medium slow tune can be like a death march, or it can have a little bit of a, a bounce to it. I'm not going to change tempo, but it's. I just kind of changed the approach. Maybe it's all in my mind, but I need the rest of the band. Or, or play that like a draggy, sad kind of thing. <laughs> oh, it is. <laughs> you know, add just that little bit of bounce. A lot of that comes from the banjo, how the banjo player wants to interpret it. Um, yeah, how much we did that? <laughs> like a banjo player. Uh, Steve Martin said everything's happy when you're playing the banjo. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Steve, your house is on fire. Pendulum swings. The two outside points might be the same, but it's, mm -hmm. it's yeah. the weight that that yeah. pendulum yeah. has. Whether it's whether it's this much of a big arc or or all of a little arc or something, you know, I don't know how to. It's really hard to put into words. But um, is there are there any questions? Like what kind of things you're encountering or, or questions or why you're here? Because we're just blah, blah, blah right now. Maybe it's like to see why you're here. Yeah. Spot. Yeah. Yeah. So if you, wanted, you just got off the bus on the way to Estes Park. Oh, yeah. We thought this was a book club meeting. Yeah. yeah. I got a question. If, you're, if you got a uh, guitar and a bass, it's just the two of you and, and the guitar player is singing, who, what's the best way to start the time? Do you let the bass player start the time? Or the guitar player started because the guitar player would be doing the singing. Well, if it's his song, if it's his singing and strumming and you're supporting him, they'll count it off or kick it off for you. Yeah. Um, if it's something where, you know, he's he'd feel happier with a bass player counting it because 
essentially I'm the rhythm section for him, you know, in another way, that could happen too. It, it really doesn't matter. Um, but usually that would be the performer. I'm going to sing and strum, so whatever he wants to do, I'm just going to you kind of follow them. Go with that. Singers got it made. That's why they're all prima donnas. <laughs> all right, we're going to do this song I wrote. Here, I'm kicking it off. I'm taking the first solo. I'm singing the verse, verse, and chorus. And don't mess it up. Ready? Here goes. Yeah, everybody watch me. Go ahead and say what you mean, David. Don't hold that. <laughs> you, know, you know how many lead singers it takes to screw in the light bulb, right? How many? One, they hold the light bulb, and the universe revolves around and That's it. <laughs> how do we get on to that? Just a neutral oh, hatred. Neutral <laughs> <laughs> <That's literally> hatred. <laughs> <laughs> no, whoever gets, whoever's singing the song pretty much gets to pick it. Mm -hmm. Is that what you're talking about? Yeah. yeah. And the guitar yeah. player's doing the lead? Mm -hmm. I've always kind of done it like so. If Yeah, if I'm going to uh, sing a song and these guys are going to follow me, I like I like it when they do this or I do this. I'll kind of lead over and say, let's do nine pound. And we all kind of do this. One, two. Oh, really? I need to do it. There you go. Know. Oh, you're singing. You can't sing. it <laughs> That's typical. They don't know what they want. <laughs> Songwriter, singer. Can I take the first lead? Uh, I could. Okay, I'll do that and then I'll count it. One, two, three. So I've kind of let them know what tempo I want.
You know, so I played a whole bunch of different rhythms, you know, just because I didn't know which one was right. <laughs> I was hoping to find one I thought would be nice. Didn't, didn't but happen. they're all nice, <laughs> you know, so there you go. Now, you were doing some cool stuff. I mean, that little interplay probably. About it. When he was doing hey. all this kind of, oh, wow. That you can shoot that thing in for something. <laughs> when David's doing it, what kind of thing was you were doing there? Sometimes I'm just chop playing down strokes. And that lays real nice if the other guy will just play pretty straight ahead over the board. guitar class today if you got two two guitar players there's no point in both of them sitting there going because to me real easily you start getting into this real floaty rhythm and there's nothing to me that's just real hard to play against than a background that's just kind of mm -hmm. doing this but if you got if you got somebody really solid to play against um, it makes you can just relax and play your lead did you notice how none of us were playing very hard did you notice that I'm so glad you did. <laughs> There's a lot of people don't notice that. Or it seems like they don't because they go to play and they start banging on their instruments just as loudly and hard as they can, which becomes anti-music. Anti-musical, in my opinion, anti which stands for a lot around here. Isn't that right? <laughs> it's just, to me, it's better if everything's... I've always been really surprised at how quiet some people play that I hadn't a long time ago like before meeting Vassar Clements you'd think this guy's playing really hard and really loud right I mean da -da 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 -da. I think that it sounds so strong right <coughs> meet the guy it's like if you don't come down and play the right dynamics around him he can't do what he does because he doesn't do it real hard and it, I think it's probably true for a lot of players not all there's, there's old David Grisman and those kind of guys <laughs> that are actually really loud, but um, it's a subtle thing. It's more, it has more to do with being really in tune and really in time and all that stuff, and it becomes big and it becomes strong um, just because it's in tune and it's in time. It's not that it's uh, a struggle. Yeah, because that's, that's one of the reasons that I kind of quit going to a lot of jam sessions. Years oh, ago, I hate jams in part <laughs> because when it just turns into a, a loud contest, like you said, you can't do what you do, so you just stand there and do your time. You feel like, and, and a stimulating jam session to me is, is you're creating, you're supposed to be you're supposed to be listening to the other guy and listening to what he's doing and, and back and forth helping. And if I've, got a, if I've got to try to play over the top of a bunch of people who are ignoring the dynamics and they're just playing. They're, they're getting down with their own rhythm plan and just digging their rhythm plan. They're not doing the role of the rhythm guitar player. It's hard to play over somebody like that. So you quit trying to create, do anything interesting. You just sort of play your And get through the solo and sneak out of the jam. So a lot of listening. <laughs> it is. Just exactly that. It's a lot of listening. Somebody does something. While sometimes you need to not pay attention and play just as it goes. And sometimes it's cool to, to do something. They'll do something that makes you do something, which in turn makes him do something, which in turn makes the fiddle player do something. Then it makes you think of something again. And it, sometimes, at the best sessions, can just build on itself till it gets ungodly fun. <laughs> You know, I don't know how musical it is, but in the best, the best instances, you know it is. And you listen, you listen. That's where, I mean, it's a, a group of people. It's not just you, and they're there 
to make you sound good. It's not like you're Garth Brooks and you hire these other people and tell them what to do. And, you know, it's everybody playing for himself. But yet, with the goal of making each other sound better than what they already do. Yeah. And it's cool when that happens. I do these play every now and then in Sweden. And the bluegrass community in Sweden, you can count, well, on both hands, just about. And everybody fine to the hot rod their instruments to see who's going to be the loudest. And the banjo players will, will seriously work on anything they can to get the loudest thing. Because when you get in these jam sessions with these guys, it's like this guy's out here beating the hell out of his guitar and 15 vultures with their instruments standing around. Nobody's listening to the guitar player. I, I tease these guys about it because I... I I don't like to jam with these guys, Leif Sunderbrand and all these guys. And they're watching, and they're they're not listening to this, they're looking at each other. They look like drag racers, you know, getting ready to go. And as soon as that guy's finished with his solo, five guys jump in, and whoever's got the loudest banjo wins, and the others kind of get a grun disgruntled look on their face. <laughs> they stand back, and he just plays really loud, and then they start looking at each other, and he bails out, and everybody jumps in again, and the loudest guy wins. It's like, no... They're all cold and drunk and stuff, aren't they? Yeah. <laughs> and it's light too long. They don't get enough sleep. There's a lot of reasons. <laughs> yeah. They try staying up all night to jam in way, January. Way north. <laughs> it never comes up. Some of those good <laughs> so jams, stay, man, up stay up all night and you didn't even realize it. It's so fun. Yeah. Those are the best ones. It's like, yeah, I did something. <laughs> You know, I jammed with some friends, we made some good music, and I learned some things. I feel good, or even if you didn't learn anything, you felt good. It's amazing the feeling you get from playing well. Incentive to try to do it all the time. Any questions? Any uh, comments? Anybody got a beer? <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking about it. Anybody? Rude remarks, insults, or no? Criticism. Come on, <laughs> some kind of question. Well, what's that been question? <laughs> what's the square root of? Where did you uh, ever well, get those pants? I was talking <laughs> to somebody. <laughs> Is that your final answer? Yeah. <laughs> somebody a little earlier. Pay for that haircut. <laughs> the experience of playing with somebody that's got good rhythm is is a really good uh, dose of medicine. Like playing with a metronome or playing with a record you like is is great. But when you get to play with somebody, you kind of, I think you develop sensitivities to different kinds of rhythm and the different kinds of personalities that go into different people's rhythms. Because you're really working with a personality in a way. I think I can tell a lot about a person about how they play rhythm. You know, more so than their solo or anything else. And um, But just play with the best people you can, you can play with. And like we were saying, really listen and really tune in to what that rhythm is all about and try to support it. And then you'll definitely go away with something, you know. And I guess that's probably true with playing along with records, too. I don't know. Well, I always heard it's try to be the worst one in the group <laughs> and still be a part of the group. Yeah, but get in anyway. <laughs> but get in. <laughs> don't, get cooked, don't get fired. Don't be that bad. But because then you've got the rest of them to learn from. Hopefully. You know, you'll be able to pick things up. Like I played a band with a group named Psychograss that Todd also plays with. It. It's Mike Marshall, who has these fingers that look like, you know, bratwurst, playing the <laughs> mandolin, playing up in the frets. And frets are only that wide, and he's way up here. It's like, how in the hell and why does he do that? And then Daryl Langer, who knows so many things more than I will ever know, can do some things that just like leave your jaw dropped on the ground. It's like, man, I'm so glad I'm here. I don't know any of this, but hopefully some of it will sink in. You know, and then I'm sure I do some things that they might not do. I'm sure they could if they wanted to, but they don't. <laughs> you know, but we're coming from different places. Mike's a world music guy. He likes to listen to Brazilian players, Argentinian players, he listens to everybody. He just doesn't know any better. And uh, Daryl, <laughs> Daryl's a jazz guy. He listens to all sorts of jazz players. 
and that comes out in his playing. And I listen to a bunch of dead guys. I like Clarence, Lester Flat, West Montgomery, Django, Hendrix, dead guys. <laughs> so that's who I listen to. So we're all coming from a different place and trying to make one sound. I just listen to my own recording. <laughs> Yeah, I tried that, but I just hate them. <laughs> it's funny what you said there too. Is like it, had, especially having to do with the rhythm. Everybody that I've noticed that's in this music draws a huge influence. Is probably the greater part of their influence is outside of bluegrass and brings it back in. And on one hand, it makes certain element upset that you're going outside of tradition to get it. Yet that's what Monroe did when he started playing bluegrass. Exactly. That's where it all started. He went from. outside of tradition and started pulling in. I mean, he, he would tell you the, the roots where all these influences came from. And Colored it, blues. I mean, who invents Scottish. new guitar licks? It would become inbred if guitar players only listened within the same form of music to each other. But if you go outside of it, for rhythm ideas, I mean, that's what I like about mm -hmm. listening to Sam play rhythm chops. He's not two, four, you know, one, two, three, four. Right. He, he's playing a lot of drum licks, and bongo licks, and things like that on a, on a mando. And so, what's up? 